Hello everyone, welcome back to Blue Diamond Retrospective, uh, episode 5, uh, The End of an Era. Uh, this episode I'm going to be discussing the last projects of what was later uh, separated uh, in the categories as Phase 1, as well as The Real Business. So basically I'm going to take it from the beginning of 2012 to the fall of 2014, which is when I got a new camera and a lot of things were changing and plus class projects started up and everything. And then I'll go from there and I'll talk about class projects in a later episode. But for right now, I'm just because I've already talked about the Survivor Wars end, which was right after Real Business. Uh, so basically I'm gonna get us all the way caught up uh, to through the war's end with this episode. So sit back and relax and enjoy. Uh, hearing about the uh, end of our first phase of films. Uh, enjoy. So after 2011, we were gearing up for uh, 2012. We already knew what projects we wanted to work on. Um, which was like the Lost Scene 3 and the Lost Scene 4 and the Survivor Season 2. Um, and we started working on the Lost Scene 3. The Lost Scene 3 was originally supposed to be a sequel. It was set up at the end of Lost Scene 2 in a post credit scene. We were going to get together with uh, Hayden and Brock Zeke and do a crossover film with their character of uh, Finn from what they were starting up a movie series uh, with that uh, character, and I thought it'd be cool since they lived not too far away from where I lived, to do a crossover film. So that was set up to be the big finale of The Lost Scene, but then it got uh, pushed back due to just scheduling conflicts at that point. And so I got the idea from Roger Scott to do a prequel. So I said, okay, three will help set up what the story is in the lost scene. Help more establish the continuity timeline of the story. We'll go back, we'll explain how everything got set up the way it was in the lost scene. Even though we don't see the full movies of what these um, films would be, since it's supposed to be only just a scene. I suddenly kind of took the shift to make the series more serious because like the first film is kind of a homage parody of 80s action films and the same with the um, the second one uh, does the darker 80s movies but the third one's really where I switched it to be in the more serious uh, tone which the uh, film series has taken um, everything went really much According to schedule, the way I planned it, I mean, we didn't quite have as many extras as I would have liked in the film, but we got pretty much followed the script the way it was. It's still funny to me that the longest scene in the movie, the scene where they sneak to um, the house and get the intel and then escape, is the longest scene in the film, but in the script it just says they sneak to the house get inside and get out undetected and leave. And that's pretty much it. It's just like a couple of sentences on the script, but it ends up being the longest sequence of the movie and it was kind of the highlight of the movie. I really enjoyed that sequence. I love the shot that we filmed of them coming up out of the grass. It was great. We had a great location for that. Um, you know, we got Chris Mooney back as Colonel Grace, and this is also the film in which we named the characters, which I find funny because in the audio commentary, I think of the first movie, I say, we're never going to name the hero. Never. <laughs> and next thing you know, I named him. Uh, Edward Niven. It's the first time we ever hear uh, these names of these characters. I mean, we heard Thompson's name in the first movie, as well as Jones, but now we're saying of Eric Thompson. Timothy Jones, we finally meet Timothy Jones, who was supposed to have died in the first movie. Um, and then, which is played by Matthew Copeland. Uh, we had some one-off actors, Garrett Pratt and uh, Tony Notrim were both 
in the movie, but they didn't appear in any other films of Boo Diamond, but they were willing to do this one film. Katie Hoy, it was our first time working with her, and she, of course, came back in Reflection of the Soul. It's Terry Bliss. Uh, she enjoyed working on these couple of films that we did with her. Um, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, actually, the shot we couldn't get Garrett Pratt there on the day when Katie Hoy was there. So actually, the shot of the hand coming towards her with the gun that's actually my hand, not his. You can actually tell because we shot one. We had to shoot it late at night because he was running late, and then. We shot the other one during the day, so it's not that well cut together, but it's still on scene, so we just kind of rolled with it. Um, it went pretty much like clockwork. That was one film in which pretty much went the way we wanted it to go. It was released a little bit later than I would have liked. I was originally trying to shoot for like either you know like early May. We ended up being early June. We were about a month off, but honestly, it. It was a few days of filming, uh, lots of fun. Uh, it's one of my most enjoyable films I've worked on. Because it wasn't really that difficult. Um, got to use all the different weapons that we've had. We got to use a few new airsoft guns like the D36, and then a new AK-47 that we had, and we just had different guards running around. Brought back the leather jacket <laughs> that I described in a different documentary uh, series. Uh, Nah, it really turned out well. The effects were well done. Uh, Sean did the whole double guard effects. Oh, the sneaking scene still, though. Best, favorite scene. There's a lot of really cool stuff in there. We got a nice classic car in the background. We were filming at the Denton's house again, which was the first time we had filmed there since Shadow of Revenge. If you know, it's Ivanov's safe house. It's the same uh, location. Uh, so yeah, it had been like two year, three years three years since we had actually filmed there. So it was kind of fun to come back. But yeah, it, it really didn't take too long. It was just a really fun film to uh, put together. Uh, and then we got out in June uh, and prepared to get ready for the fourth one, uh, which then got delayed. Uh, and then after it got delayed, we decided to push it back to the next year, and then it just got stuck in development hell. So that's what happened to the Lost Scene 4 Retribution up to that point. Uh, so what we spent the summer working on was the Survivor Season 2. I decided to just go ahead and put all focus on that. Uh, we filmed that and set to release it at the end of the year. And then I got together with Sean because Sean said he was announcing to me that he was leaving and we were no longer going to be working together. So we kind of sat down and I remember we were at CeCe's Pizza and we discussed what we wanted to do as a final project together since we weren't sure if we were ever going to be able to work together again. Luckily, we've been able to do a few things since. But we finally decided a third Bond fan film. Let's resurrect Reflection of the Soul. Let's rewrite, you know, I'm going to write it up, write the script better than what I was doing with my first attempt uh, back in 2011, and let's do it, and let's just knock it out. If we can film it fast enough, we could see he was going to leave in February. We're like, if we start filming at the very end of the year, beginning of next year, and we knock out your scenes first, try to concentrate on getting all of your scenes done we can get this film made and then get all the visual effects, try to get everything, you know, done really quick. Uh, so I was trying to shoot, uh, make a shorter film than Shot of Revenge. Uh, it ended up being a good length. I like the hour and a half. I always think somewhere between an hour and a half and two hours would be good with the Bond uh, fan film because the two hours and 20 minutes are just... I, I've always felt the Tower of Bench could have even been cut down probably about 15 to 20 minutes to get down to about two hour mark would probably actually work better because there were certain scenes that did go on and a few scenes that would cut probably now but that's all in hindsight which is why this retrospective kind of exists but we started gearing up for it so we decided that's what we were going to do so then that's what we spent the fall after I um, finished filming The Survivor I started school and my first semester, I uh, spent that whole time just writing the script, preparing locations, props, getting a cast together, um, 
I wanted it to be standalone from the other two. It was not going to be connected. Um, if I did try to do something that would be connected to those films, that would be for a fourth film, if I ever made one. This is my, um, did my Goldfinger, kind of. It's the one that doesn't fit with the other ones that would have been coming out. Uh, if I did any more, but I really was determined to make this third one my last one. Uh, but we'd had enough of a technology leap with effects and camera and equipment and stuff. I really wanted to see what we could do. And honestly, I think we did a pretty darn good job. There are a few tweaks here and there I wish could have been done differently. There were things that I envisioned a little bit differently. Um, but, you know, there's limitations of what you can do. Uh, the battle scenes were not quite as big a scale as I would have liked uh, with the CIA and... Sinclair's men, but I think we had a good villain, Walter Sinclair. Um, Adam Deerkin does a great job with that character. Uh, he had just been introduced into um, Blue Diamond uh, films uh, earlier in The uh, Lost Scene 3 as a guard, and now here he is playing the main villain, and I think he does a brilliant job playing this um, corrupt businessman who has these connections to uh, Germany uh, which is hinted at if you watch the film there's a lot of little hints towards uh, his uh, origins there's a lot of music that plays in certain scenes near his home you hear some like you hear like the old German national anthem uh, a couple other big a lot of German music uh, his uh, his logo his company logo is the old, is the same colors as the German flag of 1914, the German Empire's flag. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of little, I just tried to leave little, little clues. Uh, I really wanted it to be like, I decided, you know, of course we weren't going to do the whole film on, you know, homage to previous James Bond actors. That whole series idea was out a long time ago. So I really wanted it to be like Fleming's Bond. I managed to read uh, most of the Bond books by that point. So I really wanted it to fit Fleming's vision of Bond. That's why there's scenes like Bond throwing up. Um, that was an interesting choice, which I got a few people asking me about that they were like it's a very odd thing to see and i found in this film bond throwing up after nearly being killed i was like well that's what he did in the spider attack in dr no in the novel uh he got sick from it basically it, it terrified me. i made bond human i didn't want him to be so much the super spy i wanted a human james bond um Obviously, there are sets and locations I wish we could have filmed better. Uh, the party scene, I wish I could have had a lot of extras in that scene, but we were really rushing to try to get as much as we could get done because of Sean's leaving. If Sean hadn't been leaving, we probably would have spent a little more time with the project and made it a little better, but, you know, limitations are limitations. Which is why I wouldn't, you know, there was that temptation to do a fourth film, one that we wouldn't rush and we would take our time with and make it even better because, I mean, Reflection of Soul has been, most people regard it pretty positively that I've talked to. They like it a lot. Um, it was great because it was the first time I worked with Otto Nilsson on the score and he does a brilliant job with the score. Um, it's been nice. I've worked on like, I think like eight projects with him. Uh, where he's done the score for me, and it's always been a pleasure. This was the first time he was like, hey, what if I did this score? And I was like, you know, finally actually having a actual score, not having to worry about YouTube uh, flagging the video or anything, would be great. And I knew Otto was doing pretty good music at that point. Uh, the only regret is I wish we could have had like our own song. But we just used the Forever I'm Yours, which I think is great uh, song. There was a lot of different ideas for songs in that film um, that we went through. The, but finally, that seemed like the nice song. Uh, we had a great title sequence made for us. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, we got a couple of promotional shots of Bond in a naval uniform. It doesn't quite match a proper naval uniform, but it was the best I could do. I went to a costume shop and checked out their uniform. I just wanted it for a couple of stills, in which he was good in the title sequence because I really wanted to emphasize the whole Navy past, 
which is why Foster is the character that we created for uh, Sean. I really wanted to go back to Bond's Navy past because they never really discuss it in any of the movies or the books, and I really wanted to like bring it up. I thought it'd be interesting to explore that a little bit. So then we did the whole bit with um, you know Foster's father died in the Falklands War, so I brought that in. I I tried to make it a pretty intricate script, you know, with layers and not just a simple. Hey, this is the bad guy who wants to take over the world. Boom, we're done. Uh, I mean, yes, I did want more of a domination. You know, this is a uh, you know, nuclear threat. I wanted to go a little bit back to that classic feel, too. So I brought that in because we hadn't had that in our previous two films. They were about, like, drug deals and trying to sneak into MI6 and become an informant and that sort of thing. So I wanted something that was more the threat to the world. Um... Yeah, uh, overall it turned out really well. Of course, we got Katie Hoy back as Terry Bliss. Um, that was fun. Uh, Matthew Wood as Tanner uh, was always good. The only returning characters uh, from the previous ones were the same actors. Was me, and then we also got Daniel Marshall as Robinson. He had been that in Shower Revenge and then in Reflection of the Soul, but other than that, you know, we had a new M, Patrick Stark. Sean Moody does a great job with him, but I really like the way Patrick Stark did it in this film. Chelsea Riley was Money Penny. Um, and, you know, replacing Amanda Ellison, who I've lost touch with by that point. Uh, but. Yeah, it was just a lot of little winks and nods throughout the film, too. You know, like mentioning M. M is maybe at Blades, which is a reference to the books. Uh, we mentioned a few references to the movies, like having Money Penny listening to uh, Barry Manilow. That's from The Living Daylights. Um, there's a lot of little references and winks and nods. I really wanted it to be that way, but, you know, subtle little things. To throw in. I I really liked the way the film came out by the end though. The end product was pretty darn good, I thought. You know, and we released in October. We started filming like the very beginning of the year and then released it in October, so at least it was short it was the shortest of any of the productions. Uh, it was the shortest, actually. Going from actual filming from the time we started filming to the time we released it, it was the shortest of the three. Even though I think it's definitely the best of the three. I mean, some people still argue the Shower of Revenge is better. Uh, I, I'll let them have that, but honestly, if you ask me, Reflection of Soul is definitely the best. It just feels more complete and better. Um, we worked on a little um, film being be during the time of post-production. Uh, there was a contest at Mizzou. Uh, it was a 48-hour uh, zombie Film festival. It was for a zombie fest uh, because it was about to be October. Uh, they literally you had starting at like Friday at seven o'clock till Sunday seven o'clock p.m. Uh, you had to film, edit, and you know submit a film. Forty eight hours. You literally had forty eight hours to submit. Uh, and you had certain instructions. They had to have like I think it was headphones that was the item you had to have headphones in it uh that was the item so you had to be at the meeting right at seven o'clock to find out that information i very quickly wanted to do sci-fi because i knew nobody else would do sci-fi i wanted to do a serious sci-fi um thing and man patrick stark he wanted to get together with me on this and we ended up being the only two that were there for that, which is unfortunate. We couldn't get anyone else really quickly together, scramble anyone real quick for it. So we just filmed it near his house. Um, but man, the costume we managed to put together, I loved that thing. I, I was so comfortable wearing it. Unfortunately, I had to go to work later that day. So because I was like, I could just wear this like all day. It was so comfortable. Uh, it looked really cool. And we used some pro. I used uh, a couple of the props. I used like the um, Nerf gun prop that was made for the Survivor. I ended up uh, using that because Survivor Season 3 obviously was canceled in 2013 when we were working on Reflection of the Soul. We weren't going to have to worry about um, 
Survivor Season 3, so I decided to just use the prop uh, and made, you know, this Dave Harrison uh, costume, and it was raining even when we were filming, but man, it was a lot of fun to put together. Um, I put two versions, I put a more, a quick version, because it only could be two minutes long, so I had to do a quick version, and then later on I was able to put together kind of a full version. Um, but we didn't win anything in the contest, unfortunately. Uh, people really wanted comedy, and like 75% of the zombie films that were shown were like comedies, and those were the ones that won. So I guess comedy was winning the day in that one. Even though it was like, you know, here we go, you know, sci fi. It got some people's attention when it was shown. They were like, wait, what? Sci fi? You're 2160, what? What, we're in the future now? It's like, yeah, we're, we're gonna do this full on uh, sci fi thing. Uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun uh, using the costume the props. It was just a little film. Not much to say about it. You know, Patrick couldn't, you know, we did as much makeup as we could. As, he, as I said, we were rushing, and I had to work during part of that. I had a work shift, so, you know, putting all that together was tough, but we managed to get it submitted, and at least, you know, it exists, so it was a little fun, little project to just work on. Uh, since I hadn't filmed anything since we had finished filming Reflection of the Soul. So 2012 and 2013 were a lot slower years compared to 2011, especially because we had to get canceled, you know. In 2013, we also canceled once again. Lossing 4 got canceled. Survivor Season 3 got canceled. So it's only 2013 became basically just Reflection of the Soul. That was pretty much it. Like, I just put all effort into that. And, you know, and of course, I was working on my classes and stuff, and I hadn't gotten any of the production courses yet. I was trying to work my way to get to the production courses. Um, and, you know, Reflection of the Soul came out. It was very well liked. Uh, it, you know, went pretty well. And then 2014 got started, and right at the very end of 2013, I was um, decided to call it uh, phase one because while well, Sean was gone, we were about to get new equipment. Things were changing. A lot of change was happening in Blue Diamond. So I decided to call it, divide up our films now in phases. So it was phase one, which originally I considered the idea of phase one being Price of Loyalty Shadow Revenge, 2008, 2000, uh, 2007, 2010. That's it. That would have been phase one. And then 2011, 2012, 2013 being phase two. But I decided, eh, it was only a couple of films in phase one. Even though there is a technology jump from Shadow Revenge to The Lost Scene, I decided not to break them up. So, just narrowed it down. Um, decided to make it all phase one from the beginning to, you know, with Sean and everything. So that was phase one. So I knew going into 2014, we were gonna start with uh, the real business which was going to be a sequel to the computer network, which we were going to submit into the Valentine's Day Film Festival at Mizzou. Uh, we, you know, could only do 20 minutes long. It could only be 20 minutes long, and I made full use of that 20 minutes. Um, so I started working on that project. Uh, we were getting ready to do Doctor Who, uh, Family of the Doctor. Uh, I really want to try out my hand at Doctor Who. We had a, we had a number of ideas of what we wanted to do, and uh, Survivor. I finally wanted to get the Survivor Wars End going since we didn't get it going in uh, 2013 because we had just canceled season three, and I didn't have enough time to gather my resources for Wars End. Uh, so we got it done. We got a lot of stuff done there. Um, the real business, uh, we got the real business um, started and it, I knew I wanted to make it, just go ahead and make it a sequel to the computer network, but I didn't really want it to be like a sequel where you had to see the first one to get the second one. I wanted it to still be standalone, but there will be little references and characters and stuff and I'll be like, oh yeah, I know them, uh, I know this character. Um, you know, like Chris, but I knew we couldn't get most of the cast back, so I had it where it was supposed to be a lot of the characters uh, have left, and they hadn't heard from him for a while, so I brought in a new cast, like Adam, 
Uh, Rachel Mooney's first uh, role with us. Uh, I managed to get her involved because she was very much interested in acting. So it was great having her. She she did fantastic in that film. Adam came back. Uh, and then I got Patrick Stark back. Uh, Matthew Copeland. So, you know, a few of our regulars came back in that film. And, you know, it was just supposed to be another meta film to explain, you know, how I was feeling and stuff at the time. Uh, we didn't win anything in the uh, film festival, but people noticed it, you know. It was the last film to use our little camcorders. Uh, final film for that because the Survivor Wars End didn't use those cameras because he used the Survivor camera. And then we switched to new cameras after that project. Um, so, you know, little film, filmed it around campus, little, you know, fun locations to film around. Same, you know, just to make it feel, you know, it's a good little sequel to the computer network. And I did have the idea after that that maybe I could make a trilogy out of it, which is still an idea that I really want to do. I really want to do finish a trilogy with the character of George. Um, nice story. Not much to say about it except for that. I mean, good cast. Everyone did their roles well. I uh, really love Patrick Stark's uh, Finn. Uh, Flynn. Um, Flynn is hilarious. Uh, it's supposed to be just as over the top. I just care about getting views type of guy instead of caring about what kind of movie he's making. Uh, played it very well. Um, really just... I really enjoyed working on it though. It was just a fun little thing to put together. We filmed it in a short amount of time. I think it was like two or three days of filming and then I edited it in like a month. So it really was one of our quicker films. And then it took some time before we could film something again. I think it was April that we... That was in January. That took place all in January and then April we start back up again with the Survivor Wars end and then that got done in the summer and then it wasn't until August before I would start with more stuff. August 2014. Uh, Doctor Who kind of got pushed back, uh, so there wasn't much going on there. I was getting ready for my classes. We're about to start having film projects. Um, last movie made with iMovie, The Real Business was, uh, because that semester I was taking my first production course, which was post-production. So I learned how to use Adobe Premiere Pro and started using that from then on. I uh, got uh, start working on editing uh, Patrick Stark's uh, Martial Law that spring. Uh, so yeah, that was... We had fully transitioned out by the time of August, which is where this uh, episode will end. Uh, thank you for uh, watching this episode. Uh, not a whole lot to say. Um, I mean, those were the four main projects between 2000 beginning of 2012 and 2000 and the summer of 2014 going into the fall um so yeah uh yeah so next episode i will be talking about the class projects that i worked on at mizzou all the different class projects i worked on for two years um but yeah so we were done with iMovie we were done with the old cameras i got the canon t5i we're ready to move into the new wave of filming. Phase 2 was about to be fully on a roll here. Uh, we would gotten the real business and Survivor done. Survivor being the first one I used Premiere Pro on. So you see how everything kind of transitioned at the beginning of Phase 2. Uh, and we moved on into these class projects, which will be in the next episode. So thank you for watching this episode, Buddha Retrospective. And I will see you all later. Take care.